Well, welcome back. It's uh, Wednesday Wisdom, and let's jump right in. So here's a question that uh, I want to talk about today, and it's a question I think a lot of people have, and that is, why don't I understand the Bible? Why don't I understand the Bible? Okay, let me ask uh, you a question right back. Why should you understand the Bible? Okay, now, please don't get on Twitter and send me angry emails and say that Jack says that we shouldn't have to, that we shouldn't understand the Bible. That's not what I'm saying. What I want us to examine is the question, why should we assume that the Bible would be easy to understand? There are a lot of books and movies, uh, music, that when I read or listen or watch, I I don't get the first time. I have to read it a few times. I have to listen over and over until something clicks. Um, I might have to read an article that someone's written about the movie or the album to help me understand it a little bit better. Why would we assume that the Bible is any different? Well, but Jack, I should understand the Bible because God wants me to understand it, right? Yeah, yes, he does. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And now, hopefully, I've thoroughly confused all of us. Here's the deal. Yes, God wants you to understand the Bible. And we should not assume that the Bible is going to be easy to understand. Okay, what does that mean? Well, how does God want us to learn? How does God want us to learn? If his goal is just transferring information, why doesn't he just direct download all of the answers right into our brain? He could. He could. If all he wants is for us to have answers to questions, why doesn't he just give them to us? Well, because he doesn't want us just to have information. His goal is not just for us to have answers to the questions we have, right? He wants us to grow, and he wants us to learn. And that can only happen if we work. That can only happen if we're uncomfortable. You can only gain understanding if there's a point at which you don't understand. For some reason, we think the Bible should be different, that we should just get it when we read it. Why? Should the Bible have been written at a kindergarten level? Should it come with bullet points for all of our questions? It's not instructions for a coffee maker. Uh, It's literature and history and theology and poetry, right? The Bible is full of different genres and different writers and um, and even different quality of writing. Um, there is a, a world of difference between um, the writings of, uh, of Paul and the Gospel of John. They're very different kinds of writing, very different books. The Bible takes work, but it also takes work to understand your spouse or your kids or your friends. It takes work to understand something. So don't be frustrated when you're reading the Bible and you come across something you don't understand. That's a good thing. If you read the Bible and you never find anything you don't understand, you might be God. Uh, In which case, uh, give me a call, send me an email, and we will chat because I have questions for you. We believe, and I believe, that everybody can and should read the Bible. And I believe that when we read the Bible, if we ask God to guide us, he will. But that is not synonymous with God supplying a bunch of answers. It's not synonymous with God making everything easy and immediately understandable to us. Uh, God is not the smart kid sitting behind us in class during a test whispering all the answers. He's the teacher at the front of the class, okay? And a good teacher doesn't just give students answers, right? A good teacher guides students towards the answers without just giving them. Why? Because the goal of the teacher isn't just the transfer of information. The goal of the teacher is for the student to grow and to learn how to find answers to learn how to grow in knowledge. Those things are as important as the answers themselves. 
And that's one of the things I think God is very interested in and very committed to is wanting us to grow, wanting us to grow in uh, how to find him, how to hear from him, how to read his word, how to puzzle out things when we don't understand. That's very important for us to grow in. And if all we want is the answers, then God just becomes this sort of divine cheat sheet for life. Reading the Bible isn't just about finding answers. It's about learning to listen to God. So all that being said, let me give a few recommendations for reading the Bible. Okay. First, just read it. Just read it. Yeah, you're going to come across stuff you don't understand. There's going to be hard parts. There's going to be boring parts, right? Um, There are going to be parts that you don't have any idea why they're there. If you've never read the Bible before, it might surprise you to know that there is an entire book of the Bible that is just erotic poetry. That's in there. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that is confusing and hard, um, but you have to read it. You have to read it. And I would say read a little bit every day. And what I would say is what happens to a lot of people, certainly to me, is we bite off more than we can chew. We say, all right, I am going to read a chapter every day. I'm going to get through the Bible in an entire or the entire Bible in one year. And we quickly become uh, overwhelmed with the amount of reading or just the day to day of life um, overwhelms and, and doesn't leave enough room for us to read. And so we get behind by a day and then we catch up, but then we get behind by two days and then three days. And then finally we give up because we're too far behind. We're never going to catch up and we get frustrated and we quit. Um, don't do that. Read the Bible every day, whatever that means. If you can read a chapter a day, that's fantastic. If you can read a verse a day, that's fantastic. Read the Bible at whatever pace enables you to do it every day. If you can read a chapter one day, five chapters a day, and then the next day you can only quickly look at a verse, do that. And don't feel bad about it, okay? Read the Bible. And as I said earlier, read the Bible believing that God wants you to find him in it, that he wants you to understand it, and that he's not just going to give you the answers, but he will guide you towards knowing him better and understanding him and his word more. So read it, read it. Um, And don't get frustrated when you don't see results right away. Um, We all know this about exercise. We know that it's foolish to give up after a week of an exercise program because we don't see results right away. It can be frustrating not to see results, but we know it's silly to give up right? Results take time and and commitment. And um, what I would say is uh, read the Bible, even if, read the Bible, especially if you don't see any difference. Give it time, but do it every day. Uh, Second, read it with others. We say it all the time at Seacoast, but none of us were meant to go through life alone. And that especially applies to Christianity. Uh, Christianity is not this individual uh, sport, right? Um, Christianity is a community and we need each other. And we were meant to live out our lives and live out our faith together. And so that means that you should be reading the Bible with others. One way that you can do this is, uh, in your small group. Um, you know, we recommend that everyone join a small group to study and grow together. But Another way that we read the Bible together is uh, in our weekend experience. Whether you attend in person or if you are attending Seacoast at home online, um, every weekend when we study the word, that's what we're doing. We're reading the Bible together to try and understand it more. And so that's a great way to read the Bible with others. But um, read the Bible with others because... um, uh, Other people are going to see things that you don't, and they're going to have perspectives that you don't. And their life experiences are going to give them insights into a passage that your life experiences don't. And that's so valuable, so valuable. And so read the Bible every day and read the Bible with others. Have that experience regularly, um, once a week, once a month, but regularly of reading the Bible in community. And then read what others have said about the Bible. 
This can be commentaries, but it doesn't have to be. There are, um, I mean, there's an infinite number of uh, articles and books uh, written about the Bible, um, written about topics in the Bible. And so what I would say is find someone, find a number of people that you can read and, and uh, see what they have to say about the Bible. I would encourage you to do this in general, but I would also encourage you to do this when you come across a passage or a theme or a verse that makes no sense to you that you don't understand. Find some other people and, and see what they've said about that passage. Um, and, and I think what you'll find is what I was just talking about, the experience of reading the Bible in community. You know, we have thousands of years of um, people having done that together. And we have so many of the benefits, so many books and articles um, uh, that uh, people have written over the years where they've studied the Bible themselves, studied the Bible with others. And we have so much knowledge that we can draw on that can help us understand the Bible. So read what others have to say about the Bible. And that will uh, help uh, so much with your understanding and also with just helping you see the Bible from lots of different points of view. And the, the last thing that I would say about reading the Bible is have someone who can tell you you're wrong. Who in your life can tell you that you're wrong? Who can tell you that you're full of it? We all need someone like that. Some of us, like me, need a lot of people like that. But you need someone who can tell you you're wrong. Or at least they can say, you know, I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, as we grow and as we learn and as we read the Bible, one of the things you're going to realize over years is that you don't hold the same views of certain things that you did years earlier because we all grow and we all change and we all learn to see things differently. And one of the important things is to have someone who can tell us, hey, I think you're missing the mark here. Hey, I, I don't think you're understanding something here because otherwise it's very easy to just assume that, hey, boy, I've had this insight in this passage, and isn't this amazing? It might be, but we also might be wrong. There have been a number of things for me where um, I've felt very strongly, say, hey, I really think the Bible is saying this. And then over the years in, in conversations with people, in, uh, in study and reading, I've realized, you know what? I actually don't think that's true. I think I was wrong about that. It's really important that we have someone in our life who can tell us when they think we're wrong, who can tell us, hey, I think you need to take another look at this. And again, that happens in community, but you need someone in your life who has the uh, authority that you've given them the permission to tell you, I don't think you're right about that. That is so important for all of us. So read the Bible and expect that you don't always understand. Uh, understand. Expect that you won't always understand. There's nothing wrong with not understanding the Bible. You shouldn't understand the whole Bible. Uh, you will spend the rest of your life learning about it. You will spend the rest of your life growing in your understanding. And that's really what God wants. What God wants for us is to grow as learners, to grow as people who are pursuing him and who are getting better every day at listening to him and understanding what he has uh, given us in his word. Let's pray. Uh, Father, um, give us just the patience and the humility to uh, accept that our lack of understanding isn't a deficiency. It's not a problem with us. It is simply what it means to be human. And so encourage us when we read the Bible and don't understand it, encourage us that that is simply the necessary first step to having understanding. Realizing I don't understand this part of the Bible is the only way you can get to, oh, now I understand. And so give us that patience. And I ask that you would guide us as we read. Guide us by bringing people into our lives, by bringing resources uh, in front of us that will help us understand, that will help us seek you. And give us the patience to do so. Don't let us uh, give up early. Don't let us quit. Um, help us to continue to read your word and continue to do the hard but joyful work of finding you in it. I ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.